Hey folks, this is JL, the July Lioness. I hope you're doing well today. So this is episode four of Create a World from Scratch, and I am building a world using The Sims 3 Create a World software beta. Yes, it's still in beta. I don't think it'll ever not be in beta anymore, <laughs> considering it's a nine-year-old program. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm going to build a world and then I'm going to um, make some machinima in it. So I, you'll be seeing it. I have all my ideas here. <laughs> so this is um, a snowy world. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm making like a tundra or like Antarctica. So I'm using a desert world as a basis, as a foundation. And then I'm going to, using seasons, in The Sims 3, set up my seasons to be definitely winter and probably maybe fall and winter, so it'll continue to be cold. Um, I think it'd be boring to have continually winter, you know, always covered in snow. I think that would be kind of mind-numbing and depressing after a while. I don't know how people do that. <laughs> oh boy, but even Alaska has sort of a summer. I think it almost cracks freezing <laughs> in the summer. I know there's a lot of flies. I guess it might probably hits 50 or 60. <laughs> That's cold. Um, so anyway, in this episode, look at my notes here. I did, I put in two residential lots, well actually I just did one, I did one and two Peace Lake Loop, and then I did a lot of road construction, I'm getting better at it, <laughs> and grading, grading is really helpful, you can flatten the road, you can kind of smooth out the land underneath, and you can make sure the road is, you know, not all bumpy and rough. So that's great. Uh, I also, you'll see me in a painting terrain, and that's to mark out where I want to put the roads. And later I decide I kind of like that terrain paint underneath the road, so then I decided to paint underneath the road to make it consistent. Uh, you know, I added some color around the, around the joint. And best of all, I put in some trees. Yeah! finally starting to get some nature in there. I love the color green. That's one of my favorite colors. And I found a really pretty spruce tree, which is bluish green, mixed in with the, the less blue fir trees. I think it just looks so pretty. Spruce and fir and a little bit of scotch pine too. But So this is kind of like a tundra. So there's not going to be a lot of trees, certainly not um, deciduous trees. They're going to be evergreens and and dead, <laughs> basically, you know, from maybe from a fire or something. I don't know. So let's get into what I've got here. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I'm going to narrate and find some kind of a nifty tune to run underneath it because I just sort of think that's fun to add some to add some music. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at my grid. And I have just put down number one, Peace Lake Loop. This is the lakefront property. It's got a little, um, it's going to have the beautiful Vista buff, I guess they call them. And it's going to be worth a little bit more money because it's more like prime real estate. So they're going to be a bunch of lots that kind of flow into the water, flow into the lake water. And this is <clears throat> two Peace Lake Loop behind it, which isn't going to be worth as much money. And I'm wondering if I should like run kind of a hill underneath the backs of those houses so that they will be, you know, like raked. So they'll be a little higher up than the the lake view, the lakefront. 
because right now they're, they're going to be blocking the lakefront is going to be blocking the view of these people behind but they're not they didn't pay for their view they didn't pay for a view <laughs> so you know you get what you pay for so I just did these this one lot it's kind of you know it's tedious work you don't need to see that and I haven't really sorted out exactly how I'm going to approach lots this time because when I was doing Bisquick County and feel free to check that out uh, putting in all I had uh, such a pain with the rabbit holes uh, so I was thinking if I could just add add them in game in the actual game you can go into the world editor and add lots you can't pick exactly the size you want but they have a lot of prefab lots like I think maybe 10 different sizes so you can certainly add lots from the game which sort of makes parts of CAW redundant, but that's okay. It's free, you know. <laughs> so I think what I'm doing is probably adding roads and roads and more roads. Loads of roads. Lots of lots and loads of roads. <laughs> so as you can see that uh, lakeside lot sort of droops down into the water. So that would be, you could have a, I think I'm going to flatten out the land on the shores of the lake. And then you could have a house with stilts. And I believe you could have, um, if you've got Island Paradise uh, as one of your games, then you could have a, a, um, have a dock and have a boat and uh, water sled and all that yeah, fun stuff to sail around on the, the lake and down the river. And I actually, you can add houseboat lots, but when I clicked on that to do it, it took immediately, it ignored the lake and took me right to the ocean. So I guess the houseboat lots are meant for the, you know, the external of the part of the property or well if you're gonna make an island out of your your world then you kind of to make island or multiple islands you kind of punch holes in it with the I think it's the valley tool and stuff so that's how people are making their their islands and archipelagos and that stuff. So I just got a fake lake in mine. Maybe it's like the crater or something. But it's, uh, I don't know, for some reason it didn't, it immediately took me out to sea. Okay, road time. Okay, so what you do is that, that new road is just quivering with excitement of being joined with a, <laughs> with, ooh, that's a little R-rated, calm down there. <laughs> So I, I don't know why I can't kind of just pull. Usually, if you you can kind of pull back and just sort of you, you click and drag that dark blue square and just pull it back and forth until it kind of clicks onto the intersection. If your <coughs> excuse me, if your angles are correct. But maybe I haven't quite figured that out yet. Uh, there, yay! Okay, so that's that one street. Add the intersection to it. 
because if you don't, then that's a, it causes a routing problem because the Sims won't want to go to the end of that road because they don't know what to do with it. So it has to be an intersection, either a, a dead end, and use the intersection piece to donate either to designate either a dead end where they will turn around or continue through the intersection down to the the adjoining street. So the intersection pieces are very important. I'm looking forward to doing the routing. I think that looks so cool. The routing view of this world, all those little spider webs of where the sims can go. And what you do is you paint out where you don't want them to go. So there's special routing paint and it's I think there are three different kinds. One for steepness, one for sims, and one for where you don't want the camera to go. And red is steepness, blue is sims, and yellow is camera. So yeah, color coded. And you can overlap them. So you're gonna have like purple areas for like the sides of the mountains, red for steepness and blue for no sims allowed because you don't want your sims walking up the side of the mountain because uh, they will do that. <laughs> you have to tell them no. They need their boundaries and restrictions. <laughs> they cannot think for themselves. They are not very, they're artificial, but I don't know about the intelligence. They are, <laughs> they're simulated humans, but I don't think they have any intelligence. So I'm adjusting my grid so that I can get my road lined up a little better. I mean, I'm not, I don't want a grid a grid road a gridded road system like when I lived in Phoenix the the roads were on a grid and it was very easy to navigate but boring but what they did was in the neighborhood streets they made them all um, very curvy and everything but all the main streets uh, ran parallel and perpendicular which was really handy because that is such a huge huge metropolis Phoenix, Arizona. So it was a lot easier to get around. One place that is a nightmare to navigate is Boston. Holy cow. Because it's so old and there is no grid system and these roads were just added in over hundreds of years. Like uh, Old Post Road goes from Boston all the way down to Rhode Island. That's about um, 90 miles or 100 miles. I used to live in Rhode Island, so. But it was one of the first roads. It was, you know, built in the 1700s. You know, for the for the Pony Express for mail delivery, and so then all these other roads were added after that and after that and after that <laughs> in boss excuse me in baltimore where i used to live as well they've got charles street which was is one of the the main streets in baltimore and one of the, the first and the oldest and then they're like these additions to charles street i used to live on a road called or live near a road called Charles Street Avenue. No joke. Charles Street Avenue. Because <laughs> it was a road that went off of Charles Street. It was kind of like an addition, but it was just a little, um, I think it was just like a little residential street. Maybe it was added when an apartment complex was built or something. I don't know. But yeah, there was no grid system in Baltimore and all these strange names and roads that had the same name but they were miles apart. But if you traced them on a map, it would sort of get, it was like at a really old road that got like 
bisected by a freeway that was added later on. And, uh, crazy. Uh, but I would say Baltimore is easier to navigate than Boston. Boston is just a freaking nightmare. Ugh. And all the little towns, Maydick and Wellesley and Wellesley Hills, and it's all just... Whew, you just have to have lived there. <laughs> and you learn your section. Dedham, Needham, Natick. Wellesley, Wellesley Hills. That's all suburbia. That's not Boston itself. I didn't, I hardly even, I used to live in that area. Never really went to Boston itself, just was in Wellesley. But you gotta either drive it yourself and learn it or find it. A cab, a cab driver who knows what they're doing. <laughs> oh. a big truck probably a pickup speaking of roads and traffic okay where am I so I've added an intersection and we are on the lake yeah I need to flatten out this terrain lakeside so that the houses will sit better on them but of course we have stilts so not a huge issue stilted foundations but I wonder how deep that lake is Toying with the idea of putting a little island in the middle of it and maybe and putting a maybe a, a park or the graveyard or a 64 by 64 lot with I don't know what could I put on there I guess it would depend on how it looks I absolutely am going to put Plumbot Studios back lot on here. That's one of my favorite lots and one of my favorite professions and that's a 64 by 64 But that's why I'm divided up. I've got a big residential area and a big business area So hopefully we can get all the good stuff added in Yeah, so pull it back pull it forward and there it'll, it'll it'll accommodate you a little bit it'll click in a little bit but you've got to watch how long your road segments are too because the longer the segment the harder it is to t twist around because I think you only get two sets of pale blue handles one for for each end of this the road so if you want to kind of put a curve like in the middle of a really long stretch of road, it gets kind of complicated. Furthermore, the longer the road, the more the further out you have to zoom, and that's an issue too. Camera goes, bleh, you know, and just too far away. So pretty far away here. But so yeah, you pull back a little bit, and then it'll kind of pop in. This I learned after hours of struggling. <laughs> oh, the learning curve. So these streets don't have end caps because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. If I was going to just continue them. Because you have to have, for routing reasons, it's best to have a business or whatever structure it is that should be along the side of a road. Otherwise, you're going to have sims running across fields, which, I, that's just never good. <laughs> or maybe getting stuck, or, uh, you know, having to reset the sim. Boy, I remember sims getting stuck in, in hedges and stuff, and they're just like, ah! waving their arms <laughs> you poor thing you're stuck in this hedge so, glad to have learned the reset sim cheat <laughs> you just find the sims name type it in the box and that will send them home also a very good way to vanquish zombies those stupid zombies ripping up my garden I would just reset them send them back home and then fence my my garden afterwards. 
and then maybe change the moon cycle if they really irritated me enough. <laughs> But I mean, you start a, a world in Sims 3, if you've got Supernatural, you just automatically start thinking, oh, I better fence my garden against the zombies really soon. Okay, darn those zombies. <laughs> and I've seen the Plants vs. Zombies game pack. What was that? I missed out on that. I didn't start playing Sims until 2015, I think it was 2015. So um, I've heard of Plants vs. Zombies, but never played it. Now this is where the, the camera went nuts though, and I couldn't, I lost control! Help! Okay, I think we got it now. <clears throat> but I'm zoomed out too far, that's part of the problem. My roads too, are too long. Blah, blah, blah. Roads are too long. Oh, no, I do not want to road up the side of the mountain. No, thank you. Not, not today. Stop it. I really wanted to go up there. Stop. No. <laughs> Calm down, everyone. <laughs> so I'm just trying to make it over to this intersection. It's, uh, it's just like... I had like had a snake in my hand or something and just kept wriggling. So I'm kind of where I need to be now. Oops, except it disappeared. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Game with a mind of its own. Okay, now don't get cantankerous on me. I don't want you to go down there. No, don't cross that road. No, no. No, bad game, bad game, no. Almost, almost. Oh, try again. You can do this. You can do this. Send in love to this game. I love you, game. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Good thoughts. Oh, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> No, almost so near and yet so far. Oh god, go back. Pull it back. Turn off the road tool. Turn it off. That's the problem is I have a, didn't turn the road tool off so it's it's um it's laying down a road wherever I happen to have the mouse. It's like connecting the dots and making seconds. Okay, turn it off. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now delete. There you go. <gasps> Take a deep breath. You'll be fine. Now, leave the road tool off. You do not want more road. You just want to stretch the existing road. You can do this. See, so slide it along. It's all a learning experience. Hey, look, if I pull on this handle, it makes a really nice curve. Yeah! <sighs> the old lady starts to learn. <laughs> I'm in my 50s. Give me a break, guys. I am over half a century old, so cut me some slack. All you people in your 20s. Ah, just wait. Just you wait. Are you going to be playing The Sims when you're in your 50s? Eh. Where will we be 30 years from now? Well, I'll almost be dead. I'll be about, yeah, I'll be in my late 80s and I might be dead. Okay. Probably still be playing The Sims if I'm alive, though. Do you remember back in 2009 when Create World came out? <laughs> okay. So I'm looking at this ridge and there is a section that's rather low and I'm wondering, I wonder if I want to like sneak a little bridge or a little section of road. I might be able to just like plow right through that ridge with a road and not have to do much fuss or bother with it. 
at all. But it's kind of in a remote section of the world. I don't think I need road over there. So this is going to be the business district over on this side. On this side of the, the river. I have no idea how laggy this game will be because of all the, the, big, the, the bigness, the huge immosity of it, and the roadage and all of that, but we'll just live and learn. Give it a shot. So now I'm just moving this, taming the snake here. <laughs> And no, I do not want the road all over the freaking Scoliosis Ridge there. Oh, I call it Scoliosis Ridge because it's, you know, a curved spine. And I have Scoliosis myself, so it's not meant as a slur. It's just the way we are as people with lateral curvature of the spine. Right? Right. And I wore a back brace when I was 17. I had it one for about a year and a half. So, I know scoliosis. Yes, I do. I still have it. I'll have it. I'll always have it. That's why I've got one leg shorter than the other. That's why I don't sit square. Because my whole one side of my body is, is twisted, racked, because of my curved spine. So, there's certain clothes I don't wear. Whatever. No baby. Doesn't hurt. Not usually. Sometimes my hips bother me. But. Okay, so laying out roads using the terrain paint. A good idea. I really like this. I recommend this idea for anybody who still uses Create a World. And you don't know quite how to do your roads, just paint them out. Heck, I liked it so much, I just went and painted underneath all my roads and decided to keep it. Add a little color to this joint. Kind of like that caramel color. So I got caramel roads and kind of chocolate mountains. Kind of like uh, mud pie. God, I love mud pie. That stuff's delicious. Haven't had it in ages. Just the thought of it. Where did we used to get that from? Who serves mud pie? Cheesecake Factory? No, we got it someplace when I was growing up in Rhode Island. I can't remember where Mom would get that. Oh, this stuff's good. Chocolate and caramel and some nuts. Yummo. Baskin Robin. Yeah, it was an ice cream place, wasn't it? Yeah. Maybe Baskin Robbins. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just throwing this um, caramel sauce underneath the roads here. Because I kind of like it. And it makes it consistent. If it's all, all the roads have that, then it's going to make it look like it's um, part of the um, geology of the place. It's some kind of a, a mineral pocket or something. And this place is going to be covered with snow most of the time anyway, so... If it looks terrible, nobody will know. <laughs> so that's the other bridge there at the left corner of the screen. That's the land bridge. So easy to place. I just shot the road right across the the river there and raised it up and then I had my bridge instead of going into uh, the deco layer and placing the bridge object. But of course the bridge object looks more realistic. The land bridge is more natural. So it just depends on what you want to, what look you're going for. So I've got my two little lots facing each other, and I think 
to, I haven't, I, like I said, I didn't, haven't really decided what to do about lots. I will place residential lots in, in uh, this software, but I haven't decided the best way to do the rabbit holes, because they are a pain in the neck. So I'm just sprinkling everything with caramel here. <laughs> what time is it? Oh, 5.40. I gotta have some dinner pretty soon. Maybe that's why I'm hungry. Just throw some caramel up there on the caramel mountains there. I just like to sort of splash color around. I don't want to get real anal about building mountains and stuff. I went to art school, so I just sort of like to kind of looking at like, oh, how the colors interact with each other and visual, visual weight and that kind of stuff. So that's why I'm sort of just spreading the caramel in certain spots so it's like a splash here and a splish there and then I'll put in some darker colors to kind of balance it out and stuff as long as I don't do, overdo it you don't want to have too much of a good thing I wish you, we had more road choices. There must be a double wide road because of those, those bridges indicate the double wide road from the previous episode. Hmm. Okay. So we're just uh, painting along here. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking, where do I want to have my camera be blocked so I would say along those back mountains they will not be visible in game we'll definitely definitely need to see shark's tooth rock though but I think I can paint out behind it so we won't see the won't probably won't see the ocean except maybe yeah, that corner there has got to be painted out. <laughs> oh, look, we're on a big square. Uh. <clears throat> yeah, that should be painted out. That view. So I'm just trying to limit how far I want my roads and stuff to go since it's going to be, it won't all be viewable or accessible. Yeah, this brown needs to be continued for consistency. So just to kind of make the river look kind of deeper with dark color because dark colors make things recede and light colors make things visually advance so now we got some contrast there so that makes it look deeper Makes that kind of visually pushes all that white down. So now I wanted to throw some brown around to push the mountains back a bit and make it a little more more interesting. So here's the chocolate to go with the caramel. <laughs> and I guess the white is like the new hit. So is this what is this like a, a not a, not a Milky Way bar. What was that other one? A Snickers bar. It's a Snickers bar. 
Yeah, Katie, what is it? Katy Perry sweet stuff. Eat your heart out. I got a Snickers bar here. Nice and crunchy. <laughs> Katy Perry sweet treats. No, don't think I'm going to spend money on that one. I wonder if she made much money off of that. Interesting choice. Why would she choose? See, this is like, this is before my time. So why would she choose to affiliate herself with The Sims? So it was it was popular I guess she thought it was her her market you know her age age range her fans were her fans were Sims players I guess they figured it's tree time yay I love the trees I love tree time and I love this spruce I love that bluey green spruce mixed in with the dark green fir trees Love the two shades of green. Beautiful. So that is, if you look, if you look to the left, you can see what the game is doing. It's, I think it's quite interesting. So that is the very tall fir that I'm putting in. Very tall fir tree. Every single tree has its own number. It, and its placement, the, little, the column to the right of that, you see the x-axis and the y-axis axis. It's all plotted right down to the, exactly where it is in the game. And it's on a layer called trees. And this is all, all for routing, I guess. Yeah. So... Um, you know, I'm putting, it's like that old, old, um, kind of a game called Light Bright. It's, it's a pegboard and you would put little plastic pegs into the board and uh, it was lit from underneath so you would draw pictures with it. So this is like a pegboard. The ground is the, is the board and any object you put on it, like these trees, are the pegs. And so every single pole in the grid has coordinates. So X coordinates and Y coordinates is, you know, geometry class and graph paper and all that stuff. And it's very mathematical. So I'm just reading this. It's, this is rather small in Movie Maker, but I'm looking at how the numbers were changing. And James Turner, when he was doing his, he was actually typing, changing the X and Y coordinates for some of his stuff um, in order to, what was it? Oh, he was placing a big wall around his uh, downtown area. He had a, built a canal down the middle of it and he wanted to wall it and he made it very complicated. <laughs> Because if you use objects from create a world, world objects, um, you cannot, like with fences and walls in the game, you draw them. You cannot do that in the world. You get two different lengths of something, maybe, or a couple different sizes, and if everything is placed one by one, like with these trees. I'm Johnny Appleseed planting my trees here. Except he did apples. I'm July Evergreen Seed <laughs> planting my my evergreens. Like the Barbara Streisand song Evergreen. Love soft as an easy chow. Love fresh as the morning air. Oh, you guys are probably too young to remember that one. That was a on the radio in the seventies. It was the I think it was the theme to the remake of the movie A Star Is Born, 
and Barbara Streisand and Chris Christopherson starred in it and so this was the theme song to it and that was on the radio in the summer of 70 oh five six seven eight around in there yeah I told you I'm ha over half a century old so chill guys wrap your mind around it <laughs> I'm in my 50s and I play The Sims. And I know people older than me play The Sims too. And we're all cool. The coolest of the cool. Too cool for school. Yeah. We're the rocking grandmas. The silver simmers. Yeah, baby. Step aside, kidlet. Here comes a silver simmer. Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> me and my wandering fir tree here. Whoops. <laughs> That's the basement of this world. We can't go down there. <laughs> That's Tartarus. So I don't want to put, well I could put stuff along that section of the river, but I don't want to put trees around the loop because that'll affect where I'm going to place my house lots. But I do like to put trees at the ends of, of um, cul-de-sacs and intersections up by the mountains. So yeah, okay, here's where I did kind of a little Christmas tree farm <laughs> to and there's a pathway for somebody to run along a sim and I'm just trying to kind of put a natural barrier up because this will be a uh, no no fly zone that's going to be painted blue so they don't go back behind the trees and probably the, I guess I'll have the camera stop behind the trees as well. So you'll, it'll, maybe it'll kind of just look like there's a, a deep forest back there or something. Or you will assume that. So these are the, the furs. And now I'm using a, let's see, I'm reading this white fur. See it's highlighted the right hand column. It's slightly highlighted whatever object I'm using. So that's the white fur tree going in. And then I'll add in my beautiful blue, blue spruces for some color, added color. So most of these people are, I'm going to have some um, indigenous people, uh, basically Eskimos, living here. We're going to have fairies, because I love fairies. Um, it's going to be a lot of sled dogs running around and, and long-haired long -haired cats and um, wolf-type dogs, like uh, descended from wolves. So. Huskies, Malamutes, um, Samoyeds, uh, Norwegian elk hounds, um, what else? Uh, German Shepherd, but, um, not a lot of little dogs, except for if they live indoors or something. Yeah, we're going to have dog houses for the cold weather dogs. Cause we used to have a Malamute, and she, this was in New England, growing up in New England, and we had an Alaskan Malamute. Her name was Matilda, and Matilda loved the snow. She loved it. So we, she actually had, she had a, a pen that was um, sheltered from the cold. We had a, like a stoop and we put a, a nice bed in there with cedar shavings for her. 
and she would go out and she loved the snow. She would just lie in the snow, a poo-poo dog. <laughs> I mean, she was hot in the summer and New England is not hot, but she would get pretty hot and she would shed like crazy. She had a, a double coat uh, and that was my job as a 15 year old to take care of Matilda's needs. <laughs> And oh boy, just one swoop with the, the dog brush and it would be loaded with fur. So she would shed like, like, shed like a banshee. <laughs> she was a nice dog, but she was the personality type <coughs> <coughs> of a one. Sorry, she was a one-person dog, and she chose me as her person. But uh, she was beautiful, just beautiful. I can re I can recreate her in The Sims, so you can see her. Somebody will have Matilda as their pet, because she was just gorgeous. The hus Huskies and Malamutes are very similar, but Huskies have blue eyes and Malamutes have brown. And Malamutes also have a, a heavier, um, heavier bone structure. But I've seen Huskies online and they're characters, boy, they're talkers. Never had a Husky, but they, I, I like their personalities, you know. So here we are coming down Draza River. And that's a little stone wall that I set up with some trees to, for safety, for people to, if they want to look at shark tooth rock, they can go there if they don't go over the stone wall. So we're rolling down the river here, coming up on the end of the video. So just to see what we've accomplished. And I am happy with my trees and my Snickers bar scene here, <laughs> and it's more looking a lot more more interesting. Not so hot and and arid and desolate looking. Now there's the natural bridge, the natural road bridge, and we're just kind of following the roads. So it's nice and flat, really. So I don't think I'm going to need many guardrails. Love the, the trees against the brown of the mountain. I think that's really pretty. And that road needs to be smoothed a bit. But it, it, I got it through. Roads should be working. And there's the lake. So I'm pleased. I am pleased with this. I am pleased with this. It's coming along nicely. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I hope you enjoyed this. This has been JL and have a wonderful day.